Okay, here's a quick video on new genome analysis features in Row 64. So to start off, we have a lot of uh, Geo3D features and Geo2D. A lot of them are very groundbreaking. Today we're going to focus on the 2D features, uh, the latest ones that are very exciting. And uh, okay, so to get started, I'm in Row 64, and I'm going to come and create a new Geo2D. And so we can see our new shape layers. And this thing is amazing. You can drag in uh, files and they load in milliseconds. It's probably the fastest shape in GeoJSON loader uh, there is. And uh, that's and we'll get into more of the details why in a, in a little bit. But to start off, uh, we're going to load some uh, US data. We're going to load uh, some uh, country data here. I'm just going to drag it in. And you can see it immediately it loaded up. Um, it loaded it up and we can see it and we can go look at the different uh, data sources inside here. So we can say uh, inside shape files, there are uh, kind of geo IDs that you can correspond and use for mapping out data analysis. And that's, that's normally quite tricky. We've made it extremely simple to line up and get connected. So uh, to start, I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to dra uh, drag in uh, some uh, weather data. And so I'll just drag that in. And then I'm just going to connect it. So look, look how simple it is to connect it. And I'll have it there so you can just watch live as. Uh, as I'm bringing it over. So I can just click here and say I'm going to have locations driven by the location code. Now this happens to be the geo ID here. So and then I can say the color value is the temperature and bang. Look look how simple and easy that was. And if you do that in Python, if you do that with other tools, it just doesn't happen at that speed. And so then we can come and flip this around and say, oh let's look at the precipitation instead. Uh, let's, let's let's look at these different uh, uh, things that we have in this file and figure out which is, uh, sorry, <laughs> this one's the location. I flipped it backwards. That needs to drive location and this can flip the color values you can see over there. And so, and then if we want to make a, a more production ready chart with this, we can just start to add layers over top of this. So this goes into the, the county level at the U.S. Uh, let's say we wanted to pull in some more uh, data over top of this. So I'll go here and look at the US data. I'm going to grab some outlines. So these are the state outlines and I have them here. Drag that here. So now we have the state line. See this pulled back. It also includes Alaska. And I'm also going to drag in the county outlines. And you can see uh, also we can do reordering here. So look, I can turn off the underlying uh, map. I can turn on the county and state outlines. I can go and reorder them too. Look how, look how cool this is. It's like uh, if you know Photoshop, this is really amazing. And so um, this gives you an idea just how you can quickly uh, do data analysis and get uh, production ready, demonstration ready uh, data. So let's look, let's take a step back and just look at the raw performance of this thing. You probably noticed it was uh, running super fast. So I'm going to load up uh, another another version of this. Hold on one second. OK, so we're going to load a fresh row 64 uh, because I'm going to do a stress test here. We're going to load a huge data set. So this data set is um, all every building in New York and every street in New York City. So we're just going to go grab all these road outlines here. I'm going to drag that onto there. Look at the, look at how quickly it loaded. So the speed that this is working at is just mind blowing. It's using the fastest drawing engine in the world, which is Vulkan, and we have some incredible Vulkan programmers on our team. So now let's go and pull in every building, the outline of every building in New York. So it takes about six seconds to load, but the the speed is just incredible. And you're, you can also do a data analysis for real estate at this kind of low level. So you can see we have the outline of every building in New York City. And uh, I'm going to, which ones is the, sorry, I'm going to wire this to the base building data set. And then we can, we can have data come into here. So the speed is mind blowing. And you know, you can come in and change just to show you just making changes and connecting data and working visually is just a, kind of an incredible thing. And so with performance comes the ability to 
and simplicity, simplicity of workflow, you can work faster and uh, make better decisions. So just to look, uh, just for a minute, why this is, this is kind of inside the guts of Row 64 platform. We have a lot of fast web technology. This is uh, at the at the drawing level. We use uh, Vulkan for that. That's the display uh, running this thing. And then we have a bunch of different systems that are doing compute, that are doing shader drawing, that are doing triangle drawing. And that's how we're getting this incredible responsiveness. And in fact, our, our team has been at this for a while. The original version that we did, we're just using the GPU as a display engine. So this would be like the way a standard video game works, uh, a standard AAA team. But we've advanced this. So some, one of the reasons we're getting such amazing speed is that we've offloaded a lot of the handling of dense data, spatial transformation, and primitive expansion to the GPU. And so the entire thing is happening on, on the GPU, which is, just leads to these incredible speeds. So just some exciting things uh, in terms of geo happening here at row 64.